and here we are at the SID Display Week 2019. And hi, so who are you? I'm Alex Hansen, um, working on making electrofluidic displays. Um, we uh, we talked about this a year ago at SID. I showed a um, a new development, which is a full color reflective display. Um, we've made a few advances since uh, since last year. At this moment, we're doing 25% reflectance with 70% of NTSC color performance, which is better than last year. Um, and at the same time, we're turning this type of display into a real active matrix. What is uh, this? This is uh, an active matrix display, which is part of the display set. It's intended to be three, three layer uh, color display in cyan, magenta, and yellow. And uh, we specially developed this TFT panel to be more than 90% transmissive. So actually in the open position, this is the yellow panel of the, of the set, in the open position it will transmit 90% of the light. In so what do you position, want to transmit 90%? It well, means a brighter display? It means a brighter display. So a total display should have a reflective backplane, and it has three layers of color, cyan, magenta and yellow. Every layer of color takes away a little light, and that means we have to reduce the amount of light that is taken away as much as possible. So you now, do 90, 90, 90. That's it. So this exactly. is why you're down to 25 here? Yeah, that's why we're down to 25 here. This layer, each of these layers, only transmits about 80% of the light. And so that boils down to 25% total reflection. If you can get the 85% up to 90, it will go up to 50%. So, so it's very so steep. You get to 50. That means you get to twice as Twice vivid. as bright as it, yeah. Twice as bright, twice as vivid, the colors? Yeah. The uh, colors won't change much, but uh, they will be brighter. And so that so means the total color gamut volume will increase. So uh, since last year, what more do you have going on with the active matrix? Well, last year we, we had a very simple active matrix display in black and white. And this year we have developed a six inch active matrix in full color. Um, the only thing I can't do yet is to show it working because we're still figuring out the electronics to uh, to get it to uh, to switch. It's not easy. It's not just like well, using the active matrix or something else. Ba basically, it's easy, but if you make a design error somewhere along the lines, then it becomes a lot more difficult. And so we are now uh, tuning the design error out and making sure that everything works properly. So, what is it that we see here? What is that? The, the thing on top is, is actually a uh, first attempt at a product. Uh, this is a something that could be seen as a single pixel uh, that can switch to any core uh, that you want. It has a direct control of the uh, red, green and blue uh, channels, so it, it can display uh, 16 million cores, 8 bits per channel, and it can be directly controlled by a DMX system, uh, which is down here. And so, in principle, I can select a single core, like yellow, the display turns yellow, magenta, the display will turn magenta. And so you can select any color you like, any brightness you want. So this is the first attempt at the product. It's giant um, pixels. It's very, very early. Giant pixels. pixels. Actually, we link together millions of pixels to form one large area in can this have device. A whole wall? We can have a whole wall, yes. But so we're. You just need somebody to place an order? Uh, we're, we're working with, uh, with, with people to, uh, to have a look at that. Nice. And then it looks really awesome, right? Yep. And it's a whole cool. wall. But then it takes all the, the sunlight? It just takes the sunlight. It's just a reflective area, which um, which you can switch into either the whole region switching, or if, if you do your best, you could make it into an information display by uh, generating an image on smaller pixels. So, um, uh, and these demos right here is also related to what you just said? Um, the, uh, the, the glass inside. you see down there, the colors are uh, just an example of stacking the three primary colors, cyan, magenta and yellow, uh, showing that you can make any color with just these three primaries. As you all know, but because it's in, 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 in normal printing, you also use cyan, magenta and yellow inks to create a color image. So, uh, so that's what we do. You convinced that the electroweighting is, is going to realize the, the dream future of... I'm, I'm convinced that electroweighting can absolutely achieve uh, a performance like uh, more than 50% reflectance, so brighter than the ink, in full color, with the full color gamut that you can see now in printed color on paper. And uh, so do you have uh, some, some students working on this? Well, we are, we are now developing this uh, technology in a university. Um, we have built a full-scale manufacturing line, but it's still manned by students and, and graduates. 
And so uh, we are now trying to get the personnel together, the, the real manufacturing personnel, the engineers, to turn that from a prototype factory into a manufacturing line. Can you introduce uh, here the booth? Uh, your, you have some partners right here? Yeah, one, one of the partners is, um, is, is Morphotonics. Uh, we've worked for them to, uh, to make a micro-replicated structure uh, inside our displays to keep, um, to keep the two glass plates at a fixed distance from each other. And, uh, Hi, so who are you? Hi, my name is uh, Rob van Herve from uh, Morphotonics, one of the co-founders. And uh, Alex just presented one of the uh, applications of our uh, technology. What are you showing here? So Can you stand behind? Demonstrate the samples. So we are in the business of the nano imprinting and micro imprinting equipment. So customers with the bright innovative ideas using uh, nano features, micro features, uh, that, that's all nice, but how to apply them on a larger area, large scale, cost effectively. So you need mass production tools, so mass production so it's equipment. It's nano, these are nano features. What you're seeing here uh, is an image of nano gratings or smaller features with a track pitch below one micron and uh, certain sizes that are lighting up here as an example of our technology. How is it useful for the display industry? This can be scaled up to Gen 5 size that you can uh, create uh, nano imprinted features for holographic displays or auto stereoscopic lenticular displays. You can have uh, light guide plates with a better uh, uniformity regarding your backlight, 1D local dimming and reflective features on the front. And there are a lot of new ideas here presented at SID this year that all require micro and nano textures. But is this your machine? This is now running 24-7 mass production in, uh, in China. One of the first tools, this is a Gen 3 tool that is uh, actively now uh, for a mobile phone application. What is it doing? It's uh, treating the glass. I'm not sure where we are in the movie, but it's treating the glass with an adhesion promoter. Then uh, we copy uh, features by coating a flexible mold. This is an example of a flexible mold. We use an inkjet printing system to apply uh, UV curable resin on the negative texture on the flexible mold. And this is laminated then on any substrate like Plastic, PMMA, PET, uh, display quality glass, 0.4 millimeter, 0.3 millimeter thick glass. That then has the opposite feature of the negative mold. So the positive features are then imprinted and they can be used for example holographic displays or uh, any AR textures, VR glasses, light guide incoupling features. Whatever you need, that's not yet available commercially um, and on a cost-effective way. But until now, since five years we have uh, started Morphotonics, uh, been a little bit in stealth mode, but we are now showing off our uh, production equipment is at a mature enough level. It's proven in the field. The flex stamp can last more than 1,000 times, so 1,000 copies of a single flexible stamp. So you can have a very cost-effective way for high accuracy features. So, um, uh, around here, uh, the, the, the potential partnership could, that could happen here, how can this enhance this kind of display, for example? Manufacturing technology should be there on a larger scale. That's where we can help uh, Alex. So, um, nano is useful for... for uh, nano or micro is useful for our products. Um, so, in, in many cases, the technology of Morphotonics can replace photolithography. Uh, Photolithography is a very well-known process, but in some cases, certainly if you need somewhat higher structures, it can be expensive. Micro-replication in that case is much more cost-effective in terms of material use. Um, and then, on the other side of the spectrum, in nanotechnology, there are other patterns that cannot be made by photolithography, in which case Morphotonics comes in again to, uh, to produce these structures. So you replace? Uh, photolithography, some, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, certainly. It's like a big uh, challenge in the industry to do the lithography sometimes. It takes a uh, cost a lot of money or yeah, you yeah. can make things simpler or what? Well, photolithography can still create a master for us as a starting point. Then we can copy from this quite expensive master and then replicate it very cost efficiently, even up to Gen 5, Gen 6, Gen 7 and beyond sizes. 
so it opens up a cost-effective uh, application scene that now is uh, yeah, presented to the world.